Okay, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today we have actually a special sub-segment called Wrist Watch Rambles and Rants. This is actually a sponsored segment brought to you by the folks at Wrist Candy Watch Club. I don't do paid reviews. Um, everything that I review, um, you know, regardless of how I got it or if I got a discount or if it's a loaner or a prototype or whatever, it all just comes from, you know, my actual thoughts. The majority of the stuff I just end up having to buy. Um, but um, one thing I do like to do is, you know, support uh, the folks that support me. So I do kind of open the door for sponsored material in this way versus doing a paid review. I would much rather just kind of give a nice little plug to a shop and then kind of just talk watches with you guys for a kind of a bit of a ramble session. So with that said, today's ramble session is gonna be on these three watches that I have here before me. They all have a certain commonality in that they're all running any 88 or 86 movements, um, and they're all micro brands. And uh, the Seiko any 88 and, and 86, just pretty much their uh, 8R, Chronograph, uh, you know, when they run things in-house is available. It's not super used, but you know, I was really fortunate over the past year to um, come in and kind of find these really great gems of watches that do have, you know, again, vertical uh, clutch systems, uh, column wheels, and I think it's really nice. You're getting also 45 hour power reserve, uh, four Hertz. So that's 28, eight, thousand uh, vibrations per hour so there's a lot to love here uh, they're a little bit thicker and um, you know but they also depending on what you're looking and kind of cross shopping against they can be cheaper um, than some of the other options that are out there um, these are all you know in between let's say uh, you know upper close to a thousand to just over a thousand. I want to say in between like eight and eight something and um, twelve hundred. So these are really reasonably priced for mechanical chronographs and they all each have something different. And that's one other thing that I like is that they're all kind of within different genres as well. So that'll be a fun uh, thing for us to kind of chat about. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get these pieces in hand and take a closer look. All right guys, quick customary wristwatch check today. I'm wearing this beautiful Seiko mechanical chronograph automatic similar movement this is gonna be the 8R uh, versus the NE powered um, essentially the in-house variation and uh, it comes with everything that you love that's in-house about Seiko you get the heritage in terms of the design you're getting that Zeratsu polished finish you're getting uh, you know the nice hard coating as well um, so there's a lot of great things I mean this thing is gorgeous it's one of my favorite timepieces in my collection but it's also very expensive it's like three thousand bucks versus these that are gonna be a lot less I mean you can have all three of these for the price of one of these and some of you are saying that's a no-brainer and some of you are also probably like me saying yeah I will I'm not really one to spend that much on one watch uh, and I'm definitely that guy that has hundreds of watches um, and not very many multiple thousand dollar ones I mean typically around three grand is is kind of the highest I would go um, I don't know if I've spent more than that on a watch yet so um, these are really cool options but a quick shout out to Risk Candy Watch Club a lot of you guys know them for these very nice signature NATOs. One of the things they do differently is that their hardware is a little bit different. It's kind of a mixture between a RAF and a NATO style strap. And what they do uh, add, which is nice, is you can get a little bit of adjustability just out of how you're gonna lay these keepers. So you can have them lay this way or that way. And it actually gives you, if you look at it, a decent amount of adjustment. Let's say we compare just these two here, um, and then you were to take this one and lay that that way. So now if you have a larger wrist and you need to tuck your keeper a little bit differently or you have a little bit more tongue down here, you can do something like that. So I thought that was really cool. And it's something that, uh, guys, even before my channel was decent sized like it is now, um, I was reviewing these and these were, you know, I think good balanced pieces in terms of cost and quality. Um, but some things that you guys might not know is that 
First Candy Watch Club has extended into some, you know, nicer, more premium uh, seatbelt style NATOs, which are really nice. And they have some plain ones. They have some nice accented ones there. Um, really nice muted colorways that I think are really quite versatile. Uh, milled hardware. Very cool. So again, guys, uh, just, hey, if you support me, also, <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, feel free to support, uh, you know, the people that also support my channel. And one of them is by giving me some motivation, of course, uh, for that paid plug. Um, I get to sit here and do another segment with you guys that isn't directly related to a watch review, which is a lot of fun. So um let's see all three of these one of the things that i really enjoy about this is that they are um, three different genre of watch you're getting uh, of course diver you're getting motorsports and then you're getting really just kind of an everyday dressy style um, and they are all very unique uh, i find a crafter blue of course we know them from their amazing um, rubber straps for you know some of your most beloved seikos um, uh, i think they do them now for tutors as well i mean they make some really great straps and this is no different guys uh really really beautiful um a little thick for something that only has 200 meters of water resistance but in the grand scheme of things nobody's gonna go <laughs> diving in a wetsuit deeper than uh you know probably 40 or 50 meters recreationally so you definitely have it covered and this thing will do the job it is very very legible you do have this great whew, beautiful bezel action there very handsome and if you're not diving the nice thing is this is actually just a really cool looking piece on the wrist as well you do have the screw down and, and again guys all these watches have actually been um featured on the channel before like there's been kind of full reviews uh, but let's just you know take a look now moving on to the solidat here uh, this is going to be uh, of course uh, more motorsports themed kind of going with this beautiful guy here um but for the price guys this one is is very very reasonable um you know about 1250 direct from the brand i do have it on an aftermarket strap here um and i think it pairs beautifully it just has this great vintage retro aesthetic and uh you can see they even nicely integrated that third sub dial and then you also can get uh, if I can get the lighting correctly there you can see the date window at six so that is something that is always hard um, even with the Seiko I mean thank goodness I, I do like the way they did the date there where they integrated it um, and they made it level with the rest of the text on the dial um, so that really well executed from that standpoint um, and then ooh. That's what's going to be the best way to let these rest here. Um, maybe like that. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't roll over. Um, and then last but not least, the big JDM gem here, um, the Knot Watch. My goodness, look at those hands. Very, very Japanese. Very, very Grand Seiko, um, especially in the finishing here, guys. Also it does have that fine hairline brushing there to a luxury extent also does have the Zeratsu polish although you know they're not calling it Zeratsu polishing um, but it's essentially the same thing in, in terms of that uh, black polish which is typically referred to for Swiss watches um, this thing's gorgeous look at that handset the the date on this one unfortunately isn't integrated quite as nicely as I would like also on an aftermarket strap um that i added just to make it feel a little bit more high-end and something that felt commensurate with the uh the watch itself because man this this case is outstanding i mean just look at that level of fit and finish i mean this thing is is really beautifully done and i mean to a really dressy level and i think honestly even though it's a chronograph this is still quite a dressy watch and and i think it just looks the business and uh you can see here uh next to the much more sporty cousin um you know it, it's still a great looking piece so you do get a lot of different options uh similar movement again uh in terms of the way this is going to look oh it's probably a little sweaty under here because it is 
hot inside the studio, guys. Uh, just so you know. So I'm going to give it a quick wipe off camera so I can give you guys uh, a quick look at the movement. It's a modular movement, uh, which means that uh, essentially the chronograph and stuff is, is is added on after the fact it wasn't really designed to be a chronograph that's something that sometimes you don't mention because you're just so excited about the in-house capabilities you're excited about the vertical clutch system and whatnot but when you take a look at this movement you can see it's gonna look like your pretty standard kind of six R movement, essentially, um, but it just has all the chronograph parts layered on top, which does increase the thickness on that. So you can see um, this one in particular is quite thick, um, but a lot of it has to do with that beautiful sapphire crystal, and you know what? Uh, totally worth it. <laughs> Let me give that a couple more wipes because I could actually see the the sweat stains and lint on it. Um, I want to make sure that you guys get to see to the best of your ability. Check that luster out. Look at that brush. Look at that beautiful polish. I mean, this thing's gorgeous. It's thick. Some of you are looking at it saying, too thick for me. No, thank you. Well, you know what? You're missing out because this thing is a looker. Look at that dial. Um, so one of the beautiful things about this movement is the action guys it engages it's beautiful it doesn't jump around so i know a lot of you might be uh, very accustomed to something like a, a swiss valjoux 7750 or one of its variants but i will say that here the engagement is much nicer, more crisp, um, not quite as mushy as you might find um, in your standard uh, 7750. Those are great movements, though. They're, I mean, honestly, they're they're wonderful movements. But uh, there are some niceties that do come along with this technology. And the nice thing is, uh, when you get down into these pieces here, you actually can get some of those niceties. At quite a bargain you know um, so let's go ahead and get this piece and check it out I mean these all have a very different profile although of course they're you know at the end of the day oh, of course a little sticky um, because these are you know it's a dive strap um, so um, they all do have very different wear profiles. I mean, of course, they are all, you know, a bit thick on the thicker side for what they are. Um, but they all are, you know, kind of a different genre, different uh, kind of lug to lugs. But check this out, guys. This, I mean, it, this actually does have a bracelet option as well. And you guys know I'm a bracelet guy, but goodness, guys. Check that out. That is gorgeous. Let me... Uh, clean up a little bit over here and just get these back in pocket and fold it over get that out of the way and check that out guys that is just you know you take a look at that you see that beautiful bezel you see the uh you know the pushers and whatnot this thing looks like it means business and it does uh this is just feels absolutely bulletproof feels great on the wrist looks great um and yeah it's from a brand that i also enjoy oh excuse me and support um you know that's long time uh channel friends uh so really very very cool guys i really enjoy this one uh it just has a great sporty air to it some of you might see okay it's kind of like uh almost kind of planet ocean ish and uh, yeah i could see that it does have some very planet oceany uh kind of case um nuances there uh this uh really nice bezel actually reminds me a lot of my monta ocean king um in terms of just the shape of it uh the the action is quite different because this is like a yeah this is a 120 click versus the the really dialed in 60 click that you get on a Monta. But this one is really, really cool. Definitely a nice surprise. If you guys are into that kind of functional 
uh, you know, excellence and whatnot. This is going to be one that for the money you're getting a lot. I mean, for me, it's tough when it's like, oh, I'll spend so much money on like, let's say a three hand watch with no date, right? It's like, e unless even when you're spending money on something like this, at least you could say, well, it's a mechanical chronograph. Oh, it's an automatic mechanical chronograph. Okay, it has a vertical clutch system. Oh, it's, it's actually uh, very water resistant and it has a lot of the pros that you would get, of course, with a dive watch. So, I mean, there's a lot there. Um, this Hyperion Ocean Chronograph, again, and there's the full reviews uh, inside of my uh, channel history if you guys want to check those out but you know 42 in, 42 millimeter body um, it's about 17 millimeters high which isn't bad when you think about the fact of everything that it's packing in there longer lug to lug but it does have the beautiful slope down especially paired to this strap versus the uh, the factory steel um, so yeah, and then it's got the NE86 in here, which is great. So you are deleting that third subdial. And if I do want to get it going, what I would do is I would just unscrew here. Oh, hit the camera. It's a little slippery. Reaching around the camera. And then of course, I'm <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother doing it. Why why even do that? So um the problems of being left-handed. So uh, as you can see, basically you would unscrew here, unscrew here, and the nice color collars do give you an indicator as well, um, kind of a visual cue that's, I don't think I, that might be a little bit of my drool there on the front, uh, but you can see, boom, get it going. And then like, let's say you were to screw that down, you do have that nice pop of color to really let you know like, okay, this thing is good to go to, to take into the water or to not take into the water. So very cool. And I will say, even when they're all undone, it actually still looks good. Um, sometimes you see stuff where, <laughs> Um, it's like at, when they, these are screwed in, it looks a little off. When they're unscrewed, it looks a little off. I, I will say that I do like that this looks good regardless. So very, very nice piece um, to kind of share with you guys there. Of course, it's again, it, due to its shape, it wants to just kind of, uh, it wants to lay and, and whatnot. Let's see if I can get it to kind of hang out uh, nicely there and play nice. Uh, so. These other two pieces, similar story here. Uh, when we get to the Solidat, guys, these are really beautiful. These are actually out of Jakarta, Indonesia, in terms of the company, but these are actually made, all of them made in Japan. Um, for also 42 millimeters, only 14 millimeters thick, which some are like, oh man, 14 millimeters is actually very thick. Well, in terms of a mechanical chronograph, not exactly. Uh, that's actually not super thick. That's pretty standard, I would say. Uh, one thing is that here, it's a bit more of a standard slab um, in terms of that case architecture. So you're not doing yourselves any favors um, in terms of uh, trying to make this, uh, you know, be a little bit lighter in terms of visual weight, but it is finished really quite beautifully. Not a lot of transitions on the case, but you can see still very sharp, um, very crisp, brushing there, nice crisp corners. Nothing like sharp in a bad way, the feeling unfinished, but really beautifully done and just really finely executed. I do wish that this outer tachometer ring was uh, offset and, and, you know, let's say matched the sub dials. And I think that would shrink the visual weight down just a bit and also add a little bit extra in terms of the overall functional legibility. But this thing is gorgeous. Um, I think it just captures a certain look really really well let's go ahead and get it on wrist and um, it just gives you those great vintage motorsports vibes um, now we'll pop this back again check that out I mean really beautiful and it doesn't seem too tall right like that doesn't it's a sports watch it's a chronograph like that doesn't look ultra 
thick or anything uh, to me. And part of that is because they were very conservative with this nice flat crystal. Uh, they probably could have went more vintage style or whatever, added some uh, extra, um, you know, uh, height on there, and they decided to forego that. I mean, it would be nice to get some undercutting, uh, which would shrink the watch in terms of the way that it wears on the wrist. Um, but you can see here uh, visually that side slab. It just makes you think it's thicker than it really is. Um, and, you know, it, I guess I shouldn't say it makes you think it's thicker than it really is. It just isn't doing you any favors. It's not shaving away any of that visual weight. Uh, but really a beautiful watch from that perspective. You know, all the bells and whistles when you think about uh, Sapphire and, and just, just, you know, made in Japan goodness. Uh, so then you get to the ultimate JDM gem here um, from Not Watch. And these guys are fantastic my goodness this was for me was the most impressive in terms of the fit and finish uh, so I just want to get back in there so you guys can see that and yeah I thought that it did kind of dictate something a little bit nicer in terms of the strap just wanting to feel um, more upscale um, to suit the upscale nature of this watch and it is handsome and I have to say like eh, let me give it a quick wipe off camera here that's a looker man this thing is very 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 nice um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below you know which one were you into which one's your favorite let me engage that Give you guys a chance to play. I'll engage this bad boy too. Very nice. Great sounds. Great action. This is just such a beautiful piece. I mean, again, guys, when you get down to the details, yeah, you people might see the name on the dial and be like, what is that? I have no idea what that is. But when they see the hands, when they see the fastening, when they see the indices, when they see the this the beautiful casework, I mean, it's impressive stuff. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. And again, thank you to Risk Candy Watch Club for sponsoring this particular segment. <laughs>